Hey guys, Haley Lane, aka Key Black, here with another episode of Off the Cuff, and today I'm gonna jump right back into the whole Yu Gi Oh experience with a, uh, well, I was gonna go straight into Death T, but I realized on the reread that. I can't do that without setting up a very specific character that you need to know before going into Death Team. In the last chapter of the third volume of Yu-Gi-Oh, there's this cute little game introduced called Capsule Monsters. It's like the game of the week. You know, it's basically like a board game version of the kind of game that Duel Monsters is. It's two players. Each player gets five pieces that they can place on the board. Each piece contains a little monster of levels one through five, and each monster has its own special ability. You know, it's one of those cutesy kind of, you know, those gachapon games that are really popular in Japan. Anyways, the chapter opens up not really very much different from a lot of the other, you know, one-off chapters in the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga, except for the introduction of one elementary school character named Kaiba. For anybody who's seen the series, yes, this is Mokuba Kaiba, the little brother of Seto Kaiba, who very clearly has not gotten over his grudge against Yugi having lost the game of Magic and Wizards against him back in, like, the Cards with Teeth. We learn from Mokuba very quickly that his entire goal in challenging Yugi, as he soon will do, is to take revenge for his older brother's loss. And, you know, I kind of have to pause here, because as I'm thinking about this, the last thing that we saw Kaiba doing was being eaten alive by monsters in Magic and Wizards in a customized penalty game administered by the other Yugi. Apparently, he got better and uh, has told Mokuba all about his experience against Yugi. And Mokuba thus takes it upon himself to arm himself along with a gaggle of elementary school age thugs with all kinds of weapons. They've got guns, they've got knives, they've got tasers, and they kidnap Yugi on the spot and bring him to a shed where Mokuba then challenges him to a game of capsule monsters, at which, of course, Mokuba is the reigning champion. This whole setup is just so wonderfully absurd and hilarious. I love, I love the first impression you get, of course, Yugi playing a gachapon game surrounded by elementary schoolers, compared to whom he's not that much taller, if at all, and then he gets kidnapped by a bunch more elementary elementary schoolers wielding legitimately dangerous weapons, and it's like, oh my god, Yugi! I, like, on the one hand, you want to laugh at him, the poor kid, this high school student is getting bullied by elementary schoolers, but at the same time, these kids really are thugs, like they're waving weapons in his face. I, I would be intimidated. He keeps getting dragged into the weirdest stuff, like, this is not that long after the horror movie plot with Shadi. But nonetheless, the bullying continues up until one of the little kids threatens to take the puzzle off of Yugi and cut the rope on it, at which point the other Yugi decides that's quite enough, and he emerges with a snarl and a Get your filthy hands off the puzzle, you little brats! While all the children are understandably shocked at this sudden change in composure from Yugi, Mokuba's not too surprised as he has heard about the change in personality from his older brother. The other Yugi then prompts them to begin the game, no more stalling, to which Mokuba of course agrees after all, it's the reason he brought him here, uh, but he decides that if Yugi loses, he's gonna lose a finger. <laughs> and the other Yugi counters, okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, if you lose, you play a penalty game. Sidebar reminder that the last penalty game he gave to Akaiba was to repeatedly kill him in his imagination. So that's, that's a taste of what's coming. And I mean, Mokuba is threatening to cut off his finger, so what ensues is a very brief but weirdly intense battle of basically chess plus. Mokuba has clearly cheated in the setup of the game so that all of his capsules are much higher level than Yugi's. The other Yugi is, however, completely unfazed by this fact, and even goes so far as to taunt and coach Mokuba through the game. Mokuba, of course, being an arrogant little kid, gets easily riled up by the other Yugi's taunting and boasting, which allows the other Yugi to exploit his overconfidence and indignation and come up with a turnaround victory by using the special ability of one of his pieces, which allows him to destroy four of Mokuba's monsters in a row. I have to say, on the reread, Takahashi really did a fantastic job making Mokuba's behaviors and reactions really believable for, like, I don't know, an 11 year old? You know, he's a cocky little brat. He is threatening somebody with real bodily harm, but he's a kid. You know, he doesn't really know what he's in for and he's just pitted himself against the most dangerous possible character he could pit himself against in this scenario because the other Yugi was not joking about that penalty game. <laughs> As he administers this punishment for Mokuba, uh, Mokuba, 
reveals that his older brother Seto Kaiba is coming back very soon with his own brand of revenge called Death Tea. But just as the words leave his mouth, a capsule in the style of the monster capsule game they were just playing closes over Mokuba in his imagination, trapping the little kid within a very small enclosed dark space where he can hear or see nothing outside of it. It's like a claustrophobic's perfect nightmare. Maybe it's not as nasty as Kaiba getting torn apart by monsters, but... <laughs> Still, the other Yugi walks away saying, sorry to break it to you, but you're not even my enemy. Think about that while you're in your capsule. And that is the end of the chapter where we are first introduced to Mokuba Kaiba and get our first hint of what is to come in my favorite saga in the first seven volumes of the manga. So I'll cut things off there, guys. Thanks so much for listening and for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.